Walking out of the hospital, I was a blur. My life had been turned upside down or inside out as I felt now by a simple DNA test. Right now, I couldn't and wouldn't go home. I needed to think, so I headed to a bar near the hospital and ordered a large Bloody Mary. For once, I really needed that drink badly. The bar was empty, so I took my drink sat down at a separate table and started thinking. My life, as I had envisioned it, was now over. I'm not one to put off an urgent matter, but I wanted to th think and make sure all my future actions were reasonable before I went home. I'm Bob. I am 42 years old. And have been married to Nancy for 15 years. Nancy is a year younger than me, and we have two beautiful little girls. 11-year-old Andrea and 8-year-old Kimberly. Until an hour ago, our life was simple, a little predictable, but full of love and wonderful moments. That changed dramatically. Of course, I didn't want to lose the girls, but if it came to that, well, in the long run, when my plan comes to fruition, it would probably be better for them. Instead of a messy marriage full of resentment and mistrust, it would be better to just terminate it and start over. I arrived home and Nancy's Lexus was already parked in the driveway. As expected, the kids weren't home, and I was able to talk to my wife right away. I'm not an actor, but I managed to hide my true feelings and even put a smile on my face. Upon returning from work, Nancy was in the kitchen. Since I was the school principal and she worked as an accountant, we both had regular schedules, and we always shared the daily chores of the household. It was her day to make dinner, and she barely looked at me when I kissed her on the cheek. I got a good look at her. She was still as beautiful as when we met, just a little thicker. As we'd all gotten over the years, busy for a few minutes, she finally put dinner in the oven and turned to me sitting at the kitchen table. As usual, her green eyes and blonde hair took my breath away. I am considered a handsome man about 6 feet tall 180 pounds, and Nancy has always been a very bright and attractive woman. She raised her eyebrows looking at me and a questioning look met my smile. Something sweet, or funny. I stood up and hugged her. As I looked down at her, I realized that my height and looks were one of the reasons she let me into her life. My hug was followed by a gentle probing kiss that gained momentum and turned into a hungry French kiss. I interrupted. I love you so much. It hurts, I said, and then continued kissing. Her body pressed against mine Nancy responded to my caresses with all her beautiful curves. This time. She finally broke the kiss and looked at me questioningly. What's going on with you? I'm not complaining, but the kids will be back soon so we'd better cool down a bit. You're warming me up too much to cool down sweetheart. The kids aren't due back for another 30 minutes, and there's one thing I really want right now. And that's you. Okay. But make it quick. Honey, that was great, quick sex. What's gotten into you? Okay. Now it's the moment of truth. Well, I have some very good news. Know how much I love my girls, but I've always wished I had a boy too. Uh, yes, she replied, completely confused. Well, I'm going to be a boy's father soon. I said Nancy was stunned. What? I don't understand. What are you talking about? A boy? I'm not pregnant, not with you. But I'm going to be a boy's father in five months if nothing goes wrong. God forbid. I said forcing myself to smile. Well, the force of a powerful slap wiped the smile away. It was expected, but it still hurt a lot. But, honey, I love you. It was just an accident. It was just sex. I argued with her, but to no avail. Over the next few hours, Nancy experienced a range of emotions from devastation at the betrayal to anger and rage. The girls were sent straight to their bedroom while Nancy poured out her frustration and anger. Soon, I packed my suitcase and left the house, never to return. The following week, I was served with divorce papers. The motive for the divorce was infidelity. In our state, that counts for a lot. I was only granted a few hours of visitation with the girls each week. I got a lot of calls from Nancy who needed to vent her emotions. She was hurting in a lot of pain. I never had an answer to her recurring question, why did you do this to me? 
To us, all my pleas to put it behind me and carry on as before were met with a wall of anger and total rejection, I was a bastard and she would give me to the cleaners. Four months later, we finally made it to court. My attorney did contest her proposed unequal division of sets as well as the proposed custody of the children. The judge began to ponder the motive, he asked if I was contesting the charge of infidelity, my attorney was not at all surprised when I said that not only was I not contesting the motive of infidelity, but I was providing data to substantiate it. Both the wife's lawyer and the judge were caught off guard. Do you realize, sir, that as far as your infidelity is concerned, the plaintiff has presented no evidence, and if I rule on this divorce with evidentiary infidelity, it will directly affect what my judgment will be. The 50 50th division of assets that you requested would be impossible to Blish the judge explained. May I approach your honor? My attorney asked, both attorneys approached the judge. Nancy's attorney liked the development very much. However, I saw his smile frozen on his face when my attorney presented the judge with the medical DNA evidence of Nancy's long-term infidelity. I could tell the judge was really angry. After a while, he pulled both attorneys away from him, I knew what was going on, but Nancy had a puzzled look on her face. The lawyer whispered something to her. Her face turned pale as if blood had drained out of it. She looked at me with utter amazement. The judge said, this is an unexpected turn of events, and I am really repulsed by the general impression that this court has been used and deceived. However, I must realize that divorce proceedings are always a way to get back at the other spouse. The judge looked at me. You have played a dangerous game of perjury, and without this subsequent confession, it could have cost you dearly. Would you take a moment to explain? Your Honor, when I found out that neither of my two children were mine, as DNA testing confirmed, but had the same father, it meant that my wife had cheated on me throughout the marriage. I am guilty of wishing that she had also gone through all the and sorrow that her behavior caused me. I began to say she can now take comfort in knowing that every bit of emotion she has felt over the past few months is typical of me as well. Never mind that her emotions were not based on facts. I should also note that all of my requests to put my confession behind me were flatly rejected by her. At least I didn't lie by omission as she has done for the past 12 years. I love our two children deeply, and I wanted her to accept my offer to put it all behind me. I was willing to try to forgive her for the sake of the children. For four months, she had many chances to avoid this mess and save our marriage. She didn't. The assets were split in two, and the judge also ruled to split custody of our two angels. A few months later after finding out who the father was, I also won a lawsuit against Nancy's boss who awarded me over $200,000 in past child support and other costs because DNA evidence showed he was the father. Then after testimony from some of Nancy's co-workers and managers who knew about her term affair with her boss, my attorneys sued their company for a much larger amount. A payout was eventually agreed upon of about $450,000 for me after attorney's fees. Just to be clear, I love these two girls very much and want them to continue to be a part of my future.